Hello, we are back with the Mumbai Delhi Express podcast. And this time, we are going to fight about fashion and style. Which city dresses better? We are bringing the oldest fight in India to you, Delhi versus Mumbai. I am Anjali Thomas, a Mumbai at heart and the deputy editor of Ground Reports with the print. And with me is my colleague Tina Das, a senior correspondent and a Dil Se Dilli Wali. Tina, why don't you start? I mean, sometimes I wonder why we have these discussions because really, Delhi dresses way, way better than Bombay. Have you seen Bombay people always in their chappals, always in their shorts and linen shirts, airport, on a walk? It's just uniform. Delhiites are obsessed with the way the brands they wear, the way they look. It's like mirror, mirror on the wall. Tell me who's the best dressed of all. At every event, everywhere, even going to the metro station is like they're all put together. On the other hand, Mumbai has a certain insouciance. We have a carefree attitude to clothes. Wear what you want, you'll be accepted everywhere. You can walk into the Taj in a pair of chappals and no one's going to stop you and no one's going to treat you for the worse, any worse. So, you know, I like that freedom. It offers you the freedom to be who you are, to choose what to wear. I would just say that's labeling laziness and refusal to make efforts as some collective freedom of wearing whatever you want. It's not like people in Delhi never wear pajamas in their entire lives or we have never stepped out in, their, in our chappals. I just think Delhi people know how to make even the most basic outfit fashionable and that's called effort. Not really. You see, I, I'm now, I now live in Delhi, but Mumbai is still home. And on my last visit, uh, I decided to take my mum to uh, the Neeta Mukesh Ambani Cultural Centre for a Broadway show. Yes, we have Broadway anyway. Uh, and uh, I was so worried because it was a last minute plan. I bought like the, the most expensive tickets. And suddenly I realized I had nothing to wear except my pajamas. I was acting like a Dilli, a typical Dilli person. What am I going to wear? What are people going to say? Oh my God. And my dad was sitting next to me and he was like, you know, you for the amount that you've paid for your tickets, you can just wear a, a potato sack and go. It doesn't matter. And I finally did wear my red pajamas and a shirt and not chappals, but something close resembling that. And I went there. And it was so freeing because I saw people coming in their Mercs, their BMWs, their Audis, dressed like me. And then it hit me, I'm not in Delhi, I'm in Bombay. So, and having said that, I still feel that Bombay does have a fashion ethos, a style ethos. It's just that it, we don't allow it to dictate our lives. In response to your Broadway quote, I will just give one answer. That's called street theater in Delhi. Moving on. You can dress up however you want in Delhi. It's just like I said before, we just make efforts. And it's not about brands. We are not obsessed with brands. We will buy the first copy. We'll buy the third copy. We'll buy the eighth copy of a brand and proudly flaunt it. I think we're very comfortable with showing off whatever we've got. And I think it's really cute and cool because you don't find it in Bombay where, like I said, you know, chappals reign supreme. It's a hot, humid city. Anyway, let's not forget Bombay has Bollywood and Bombay has a strong history of fashion. Uh, Ansam, was, uh, which was one of the first fashion stores opened in Bombay back in 1987 by four designers, five designers, if I'm not mistaken, Rohit Kosla, uh, Tarun uh, Tahiliani, Abujani, Sandhi Kosla. Uh, they all came together. Uh, and for the first time, the country was able to get an idea of uh, fashion, of a higher curated fashion. We also have street fashion. But moving on, Tina is dying to say something. I mean, street fashion has only one Mecca and that's Sarojini Nagar in the whole of the country. Bombay, actually not just Bombay, nobody comes close to that Mecca. Everywhere you go, Bombay will have its Sarojini, but Bombay can never have Sarojini. And that's it, my group. <laughs> well, we've got Fashion Street, Linking Road, but yes, yeah, Sarojini is an experience for a hardcore shopper like Tina. But coming back to Bombay's trust, or Bombay's relationship with clothes and fashion, let's not forget that our, mill, our cotton mills uh, were in Bombay, in Lower Perel at one point. 
uh, we've got some of the uh, first fashion magazines came out of from Bombay. Like, you know, even before Vogue, you had Femina, you had some. So these were there. And going back, Bollywood, before Instagram, before you know, before Instagram, before social media, you would walk, you could bump into a star and she too or he too was wearing chappals and, you know, pajamas. No pressure. You know, I think, Anjali, you're forgetting that, you know, Bollywood is almost 70% Delhi crowd. Like, just go in and you have a good old Delhi wala. Trust me, I have tried it. I have tried to find a so-called Bombay guy at one point and then I realized later on, Oh, you know, I'm from Delhi. I've just been in Bombay for five years, 10 years, eight years. Essentially, they're all from Delhi. So let me tell you, if Bollywood has fashion, it was brought in by all these people from Delhi who went there to become, uh, to become actors. And they Coming wear pajamas and chappals. Yeah, you have forced to give in to the sad reality of the Bombay fashion. Coming back, I would just want to point out a very specific incident that really, really made me mad which is the Ira Khan Nupur Shikhari wedding. My God, the groom turned up in what I have been talking about before, running shoes, vest and shorts to his own wedding. Why would you do it? Why would you do it to anybody? To the people who are watching that wedding and why would you do it to your own bride? I mean, come on, you can make him make effort and wear a kurta. Nobody's asking you to wear some ornate dress up, you know, bangala. Just wear a damn kurta. It's your own wedding. What's wrong with you? Why are you judging him? Such a typical Delhiite to judge a guy on his own, on his attire, on his own wedding. Let the dude, poor guy, wear what he wants. No, that's what I meant by saying there is no effort. I mean, it's also a guy, so I guess I'll have to excuse that, but it's still low effort. Yeah, I think we should keep men out of this conversation completely. But this is an example of a typical Delhi judgmental behavior. Having said that... <laughs> We know how to turn up well. I mean, the pre-wedding uh, festivities had people from all over the world by a Bombay-based family. Typical Bombay, not Delhi shifted to Bombay family, the Ambani's. Everyone turned up in their best. We, we can throw a party when you want to. It's just that we don't want to do it every day. And it's not just the Ambani's. I mean, you've got like any wedding in Bombay, people do make the effort. And not just weddings or parties. I went for a play at the NCPA last month, a lovely play. Uh, that's besides the point. And it was fun to see so many people across age groups. Older women were out in beautiful saris. Not like jatak, bling saris, but they were lovely linen saris. They were dressing for the weather. There was this one lady in... Uh, a little A-line dress with a bowler hat. I wish I could pull off a bowler hat. You just have to look a little bit. It's just that we're not, we're not out there elbowing our ways. But yes, there is an understated sense of style. You need sass and confidence to pull off bling, which clearly Bombay people don't have if they don't wear it at all. I mean, that's all that there is. And I don't think we elbow our way into anything. We just know. <laughs> we just know. Uh, and that coming from... The city which has local train and are you telling me there is no elbowing? Anyway, I'll not bring get into that. But what I'm saying is, you know, you find fashion in every corner of Delhi. From, you know, Delhi metros to the Delhi university to the markets to your malls to, you know, fanciest places that you go to. You'll find fashion everywhere and everybody puts in effort every single day. I think it's actually really nice that you want to look your best you put your best foot forward. What's wrong with that? So there's one thing, yes, I am a little jealous of is the fact that Delhi actually has seasons unlike Bombay, which is hot, hotter and hot and wet. I mean, again, we have our boots. Yes, we boots have our and coats and jackets and it is amazing. But you're destroying your lungs because air pollution quality. But that's a debate for another day. Sure, that's a debate for another day is a clever segue out of this debate is what I would say, Anjali. But I hope you're by now very invested in our Delhi versus Bombay fight because we do need your suggestions and your feedback. And like I said in the last episode, pull in your friends, get them be part of this fight so that we can have more content and we can have more discussion and opinions about this. Thank you for listening to us.